Hello everyone, it's Patricia from TarantulaHeaven.com. We have Miss Spidey over here, my grandma Stola Rosea. I apologize, there seems to be some sort of weird reflection thing going on in her enclosure, but I'm glad that she's at least visible for you today. I hope that she will move for you today while I'm speaking. And this may be the last or one of the last videos of her in this enclosure. I did get a smaller enclosure, one that I think that will be more safe for her, and also one that I think is going to be more appropriate. She definitely does not need something this high. She has been naughty, and she has tried to climb on the roof, and I just don't think she needs something this high. So I'm trying to protect her, and so I will probably soon be making an enclosure video and be showing you guys what her new enclosure is going to look like. But anyway, Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to tell your tarantula's age. And for you seasoned tarantula owners, this is not gonna be anything new to you, but this is more for the newbies and those who maybe are getting their tarantulas from a regular pet store that may not know much about their tarantulas. I know that that certainly happened with me and that's why I think this is important. Um, many, many years ago when I was a new tarantula owner, um, I got Spidey from Petco and I didn't really know a lot of them are wild caught, which is not very good. And uh, I also didn't really know that a lot of times these pet stores don't really know much about their tarantulas. Certainly not all pet stores, but you will be more likely to get a captive bred tarantula as well as a knowledgeable um, store owner who knows about their animals or you know has, has either, or maybe even like bred the tarantulas or raised him from a baby or a sling. And so if you really want to be more certain about the tarantula you're getting, you wanna to go to an exotic store. You don't wanna to go to a regular pet store. And so because I did go to a regular pet store not knowing any better, um, they couldn't really tell me what Spidey's age. Um, I think that when I first went in and I was asking those questions, I was asking about the sex. I was asking about how old are they, um, and first I was told that Spidey was a male, and um, then they, I think they, they did actually admit to not knowing how old she was, and you know, now that <laughs> Spidey has been with me for at least eight years, probably more, and I have learned more about tarantulas, I know that she is a female, not a he, and I also know that she is elderly. And so I wanna tell you guys about how I figured that out and how you can figure that out so that in case you are told the wrong information or you are given a tarantula by somebody less knowledgeable, that you can kind of do your own investigation. All of this is really species dependent. There are a lot of crossovers and commonalities in tarantulas across species, but there are generally some tarantulas that just get bigger than others. So I think that this really does depend on your species, but there are a few general things that you can do. In terms of telling your spider's age, I will say that the gender probably does matter, at least to me, because if you look at pictures of males and female tarantulas, you'll generally notice that the males are a bit smaller, a bit thinner than the females. And so that can be really important because sometimes size is an indicator of how long this tarantula has lived. Um, you may also try to figure out, are the, is this tarantula sexually mature in terms of figuring out their age? So especially for males, when they're sexually mature, they will have done a few things, right? They would have gotten these tibial hooks, which is when they kind of hook out from their front legs, they use those hooks for mating, or they may have started a sperm web, or they may have little bulbs at the end of their feet, and so these are all indicators, at least in males, that the tarantula is probably towards the end of its life and has reached adulthood. And I will also say that, um, yes, size is an indicator, but and so is like the sexual maturity body parts, but also I think coloring can also be a bit of an indicator too. Some tarantulas over time and over their lifespan do change coloration. There are a lot of like slings that don't get their full coloration until they're at least a juvenile or and then an adult. So I think that is really important to research in terms of the species of tarantula that you have. Is your tarantula one of those spiders that their coloration will change over time? 
Um, I certainly noticed that with Blinky. Um, Blinky was my Arizona blonde sling that I got from like a very, very young age. And when I first got them, they were like pretty much like a little tan bean. They had no hairs. They were one uniform color. And unfortunately, Blinky passed before I could actually see them reach maturity. I never really got to even know what gender they were because they just didn't really grow and or mature. They stayed very, very small for a few years. And perhaps that was part of the problem, I don't know. I did notice that from the time that I got them to a few years later, they definitely were getting their Arizona blonde coloring a little bit more. And so I was starting to see that they were starting to look like the spider that they would have been if they matured. I think it's really important for you to research the species of tarantula that you have and to look at photos of different stages of their development. So look at your tarantula when they are a slaying. Look at your tarantula species when they are a juvenile. Look at a few pictures of your tarantulas when they're, you know, considered an adult and kind of gauge how your tarantula is. You may also um, gauge the size in that way if you were to measure your spider's leg span and then compare that to what they're saying that the tar this tarantula's leg span is supposed to be at certain developmental stages. That can be a really in good indicator. I also think a really good indicator is in terms of like how often your tarantula molts. Um, when I had Blinky, who was a sling, this spider would molt every few weeks and much more reliably than Spidey, who was a, an adult. I got her as an adult and Spidey <laughs> molts maybe once every two to three years. And so I've read that tarantulas who are older not only take longer to molt, but their times between molts are quite long. And so my feeling based on this information and also based on a few other things is causing me to believe that Spidey's in her elderly years. In terms of younger spiders, you wanna kind of be tracking how often is this spider molting? Because like I said, the younger ones are gonna molt every few weeks to every few months, and they're gonna have a faster turnover between those molts. Um, they may, that may also mean that their eating habits are more frequent than an older spider. An older spider like Spidey, she actually doesn't eat very much at all. But a younger spider is going to be more hungry, want to have more frequent meals. So I think like molt frequency and uh, appetite frequency is important. Um, appetite may be not such a great indicator because there are some species of tarantulas that are just more vivacious eaters. But... Um, it can be an indicator for some spiders. I know that like for Blinky, even though Blinky and Spidey are, are, were different species of tarantulas, Blinky definitely had a better appetite when I first got them because they were molting a lot more frequently. And Spidey, honestly, she's gone over a year without eating once before and she was, was perfectly fine. She really just, she eats like a few times a year <laughs> and she's good. I think she probably in her good times eats twice a month and she is perfectly fine. She's never been a very hungry spider unless she's out of a molt. Another sign that I think that points to a tarantula's age is the quality of hair. And I don't actually see this talked about as often. And I think it's probably because it's an easy one or it's a more obvious one. But if you've raised tarantulas over different developmental stages, uh, you will notice that when they are slings or when they are in their first like instar stages, they have no hair. They are little bald spiders. They look like little aliens or little bean aliens, and they don't look anything like their fully grown form. <laughs> and so that is a sign that, of course, they're going to be incredibly small at that age. So that's like a dead giveaway. But they're also not going to have any hair. And it could be quite a while before they develop the peach fuzz or like the very sparse hair, which I think is like the first sign that your tarantula is out of that fragile instar phase where they're actually starting to um, be a little bit more stable and are on their way to becoming a juvenile eventually. So the, the tarantula hair will pretty much be almost invisible. Um, I remember, I'll see if I can insert a few pictures here, but when Blinky first started to develop hair, it was very exciting because they actually started to take on the look of an Arizona blonde. 
and um, it was very cute, but the hair was almost not visible for a very, very long time. And it eventually became a little bit more thick, but Blinky did not unfortunately live long enough to actually get to the juvenile stage. And so if you have a tarantula that is not yet in the juvenile stage, it will definitely have that peach fuzzy look to it. Then as they grow, they will eventually reach the stage where Spidey's at, where they will have full tarantula hair, they will have their full coloring, they will look a lot more like their species. Um, tarantula hair, when it's an adult, is very silky, it looks, it, or it should look pretty healthy, it should have a thick uh, fur, not, not like thick, but it should be like filled in. Um, it should have the coloring. And unless that spider has been stressed and kicking off hairs or is in a molt, then the hair should be pretty full and it should be pretty uniform over the spider. And it should be kind of covering all parts of the spider. So those are the things that I think are, I guess, the aesthetic or the visual cues of how you can tell if your tarantula's age. I'm sure there are other factors that I am not uh, mentioning or I'm forgetting right now, but I think those are probably the most obvious ones to observe. If you guys have any other ones, please leave them in the comments. I think it's important that we all learn from each other. And, you know, I hope that this helps some uh, newcomers in the hobby because sometimes when you are new, um, you're just really excited to get your tarantula and maybe you don't ask all the questions that you would have wanted to. Or maybe by accident you don't get your tarantula from a person who knew what was really going on with your tarantula. And, or maybe you got some misinformation. And so I think it's important that um, we take it upon ourselves to diagnose what is going on in our tarantulas and double check. And if we feel like something doesn't really match in terms of the species that we think we got, the gender, the age, anything like that, um, I think it's important that we take it upon ourselves to learn about our tarantulas so that we can give them the best care. So anyway, looks like Spidey didn't move today. Um, and that is all right. <laughs> She's actually um, resting. She actually had a very active day yesterday which I unfortunately didn't film. But anyway, um, I hope very, very soon I will be filming a new enclosure video and she will be happy in her new enclosure and uh, that should be very excited. I'm excited for it. So anyway, I'll see you next week for Tarantula Tuesday. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.